Frankly, while I know the airmen every Friday can recite the airmen's creed, I also know that they don't really understand what they're saying. They really are just words to them. And in this room, you maybe haven't memorized the Airman's Creed, but if I asked you to explain some of the words, you could do a far better job of it than our Airman could. So I need you to start getting after that. I need you to start breaking this down with your Airman and talking about what it means to be an American Airman. Because they don't have that knowledge yet. They don't have the first-hand experience. They just know what they're told. Okay? So you don't need PowerPoint slides. You can call in a group of airmen and sit down, and you can take a paragraph a week with them. You can take a phrase out of there. You can encourage your tech sergeants to do that, can't you? More importantly, you can get a staff sergeant who's supposed to meet with his or her airmen periodically, and on a Friday, they could sit down, okay, and spend 45 minutes going through what it really means to be an American airman. Explain to them what it means to be a warrior. Explain to them examples of heritage and tradition and legacy and defending their country and what it really means to be a wingman. We talk about that. We don't really teach it. We just say that we're a wingman. Be a good wingman. Have any of you ever sat down with an airman and really broke down what it is to be a, what it means to be a wingman? Have you defined where the term wingman came from? Where do you think it came from? Pilots. Does that bother any of you? I don't see any pilots in here. Huh? Good. Well, what's it mean? Where'd it come from? Give me an example. Your wingman was, uh, when they were flying, was the person to be able to watch your back and make sure that uh, you were able to do your job without being in danger. So we translated it in for our airmen to watch out for one another uh, to make sure that we can get our mission done. That's a good, ex exact, perfect. See, I think you need to give graphic examples of where it comes from. They clearly understand. Give an example. For example, what were P-47s and P-51s and P-38s who escorted B-17s in World War II? What were they? They were wingmen. And why were they escorting them? Who can answer that question? They were having a hard time and their attrition rate was really high during daytime bombing missions in the Germany. And when we put the fighters on their wings, and that's actually what we did, they were outriggers. The one thing they didn't have to worry about as much were enemy aircraft. They still had to defend against the flak that was being shot at them. But the one thing that we kind of could take off their plate were what? the German fighters. And when we did that, what happened to the attrition rate of our B-17s and B-24s? It dropped. See, I would challenge you to go figure out how much it dropped. I would challenge you to figure out how high it was to start with. And then you can give that story, and then you can talk about exactly what you said, and you have just built a really good word picture for them, haven't you? that hundreds and hundreds of airmen returned from a combat mission that otherwise would have been shot down if it hadn't been for a fellow wingman. Wow. See, the term wingman is forged in blood, sweat, and tears. And some of us really can't even explain where it came from. In the flying business, you're right. Being a good wingman is everything. I mean, we pound that into people's noggins. Good wingmen don't lose sight of their flight leader. Okay? Good wingmen are always checking their flight six. Okay? 
And then we want to take that mentality and we want to apply that on duty, off duty, in the air, on the ground. It's who we are. If you're really good at it, we'll call you a good wingman. It's who we are as airmen. It's unique to us. And some of us don't even know where it came from.